All right, what's up CrossFitters? Coach Justin here, the WAD nutritionist. Here at CBG, we help you lose body fat, build muscle, and crush your WADs without tracking macros. Today, the topic is gonna be around the biggest nutrition myths I see out there that CrossFitters are caving into, wasting money, wasting time, and not getting the results that they want. So these five myths, I'm gonna bust these myths, and I'm gonna give you the right solutions to start actually reaching your goals to lose body fat, build muscle, and crush your WADs and of course, without tracking macros. So number one, the biggest myth I'm seeing out there is still to this day is that creatine is bad. Now, creatine is not bad and there are a lot of bad myths around creatine. One being that it's bad for your kidneys. So this has been studied and has been shown that creatine is not actually bad for your kidneys. If you do have pre-existing kidney conditions, you obviously want to avoid creatine and consult with your doctor in any extreme cases. Creatine is not bad for your kidneys. It's great for a lot of reasons. And I'm gonna go through those reasons, especially as it pertains to you doing the four to five watts per week that you're doing. So number one, creatine gives us improved strength and power. Strength and power are very important aspects of our CrossFit gym. Whether we're doing high repetitions at higher weight percentages, whether it be deadlift, clean, snatches, creatine can benefit us for those workouts or for those. So creatine increases muscle mass. Creatine helps us push longer in our workouts and lift heavier so that we can assimilate more muscle mass and we recover to build more muscle tissue overall. Now, another big myth around creatine is that creatine actually makes you feel bloated when in fact, creatine is stored in the muscle. Creatine being stored in the muscle also attaches water. This is why you may see a slight weight increase whenever you start creatine, which will eventually settle back down and being stored in the muscle only makes us look more jacked. So don't be afraid to take creatine thinking it's gonna make you bloated or make you gain fat. Creatine does not make you gain fat. You will hold a little bit of water at the beginning. I love the Extreme Endurance brand of Creatine JB. It doesn't make me feel bloated, it makes me feel good. And you can find the link in our bio or below this YouTube video if you wanna go ahead and order some, right? So that's number two. Number three as to why you wanna take creatine is it helps improve and enhance our anaerobic endurance. Anaerobic endurance is endurance that we utilize in very quick short burst workouts, one to three minutes, right? So it could be a sprint on the assault bike. Um, it could be a sprint on the rower. It could be max burpees in one minute. All these things we do at CrossFit, creatine can help us improve that anaerobic endurance. And so this is another major, major benefit of creatine. Number four is faster recovery. Creatine helps us recover more from the four to five watts per week that we're doing. We tend to, especially as CrossFitters, some of us training multiple hours per day, overtrain and under recover. Creatine is gonna help with the recovery process. It's been shown to reduce muscle damage and inflammation and intense exercise. And so we need, especially with higher volume types of training, high repetitions, we need to make sure that we're incorporating creatine consistently. My recommendation, five grams per day. This is gonna be the correct dose for you to reap these benefits, right? So that is myth number one around things that that us CrossFitters still believe out there that are simply not true. Taking creatine is gonna provide a lot, a lot of benefit for us and you should be taking it daily. It doesn't matter what time, just take it consistently. Number two is that carbs are the most important macronutrient if you're doing four to five watts per week. I'm here to tell you that carbs are not the most important macronutrient. Now, before you get crazy on me, I'm not demonizing carbs. They're the second most important macronutrient and we need them to fuel properly for our watts, especially with MRF coming up. But the most most important macronutrient for CrossFitters, can you guess it, is protein. Protein is the most important macronutrient for a number of reasons. Number one, it helps us recover. Our muscles recover from the workouts we do. Remember, we are at in ranges of motion and we're doing multiple repetitions at high intensity almost daily. Our muscles are breaking down and they need to be repaired. The only way to repair these muscles is through the consumption of dietary protein. Protein is very important for us doing those four to five watts per week so we can actually start looking more like we CrossFit, repair muscle, and grow more muscle over time. So protein is the most important macronutrient. A lot of people think carbs because that's our primary fuel source. And we've had several years, as you guys know, of people demonizing carbs and saying that they make you fat or that they don't actually help or provide any benefit. This is not true, but they're still not the most important macronutrient for CrossFitters. It is protein. So what I recommend is to consume 0.7 to one gram 
per pound of protein per day. Now you can get this from a variety of sources. So you can get it from chicken, you can get it from edamame, you can get it from fish, you can get it from turkey, you can get it from ham, you can get it from a wide variety of places. But you do need to make sure that you're consuming around 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of your body weight. So as an example, someone that weighs 200 pounds is going to look to consume 160 to 200 grams of protein per day. So this is very, very important. Protein is the most important macronutrient. Don't let anybody out there tell you anything different. Number three is that I see a lot of people when they want to lose body fat, add in more wads and more cardio. And that's what people think they need to do. So myth number three is that we need to be adding in more wads and more cardio to lose body fat. This is not true. And I'm going to break it down here for you. Now, do we burn more calories when we do cardio versus when we do strength training? Yes, it is true. We do burn more calories when we do that. However, it's not nearly as many calories as you think. Adding in an extra wad is going to help us burn somewhere around 200 calories more than we would typically burn. Now, 200 calories more is not a lot. This is basically less than one donut. So if you're thinking that you're going to add in more cardio to lose weight and to lose body fat, think again, because if your nutrition is not consistent, it really won't make a difference. Now, instead of adding in more cardio, first thing to do is to leverage your nutrition. Be consistent hitting that protein goal, eating the right amount of calories to support you obviously doing your wads, but also being able to recover, right? Now, this is the first lever. And the reason is, is because it doesn't take up any more time. It is the same amount of time for you to meal prep, just eat and make the right decisions and create those behavior change you need to build the habits necessary to start looking like you CrossFit. Now, after that, I would be thinking about adding more strength training. CrossFit is missing strength training. They only have an hour to get in your strength or your gymnastics or your skill work and then do a lot. And so in that time frame, it's hard to get enough hypertrophy and strength training to see results. And so what I recommend is you actually incorporate more strength training. But Justin, you said cardio burns more calories. This is true. However, the majority of how we burn our calories is at rest. Me sitting here right now, I'm going to burn up 60 to 70% of the calories that I would burn in a day just at rest. Let me ask you a question. Is someone at rest going to burn more calories if they have more muscle or if they have less muscle? Burning more calories if they have more muscle. Strength training gives us the ability to build more muscle so that we burn more calories at rest. And so you're losing body fat because you've built more muscle and you're burning more calories at rest like I am right now sitting here just filming this video. So that's something that you'll need to focus on if you want to lose body fat is don't add in more cardio. Instead, go ahead and add in more strength training. But first, leverage the nutrition side. That's myth number three. Myth number four, and I saved the last two because I would say in the last year, they're probably the most sought after thing people are doing, especially in the CrossFit space that think they're actually getting benefit. Number four is that LMNT, it provides superior hydration and improvement for us to crush our wads and do the things that we want to do. Let's think about what a supplement is actually supposed to do. So let's take creatine, for example. Creatine is present in fish. Creatine is also present in meat, especially red meat. Now, the reason you want to take more creatine exogenously and through a supplement is because it's filling the gap between how much creatine you get dietarily versus how much creatine you actually need to support the things we talked about earlier. And so that's why you take a supplement is because you can't naturally get it from the diet and foods that you're eating. Element has sodium, potassium, magnesium, other electrolytes and salts. Now, these salts are readily available as table salt, which is basically what it is, right? And and it's not necessary to pay $45 for table salt. So save your money and simply add salt to your post-workout protein shake. Add one to two pinches, and this is gonna give you the necessary dosage that you need. Additionally, Element has been shown to have way too much salt in it for the average person doing four to five watts per week. And so it's not necessary to take in this much salt, especially if you're getting it from foods throughout the day and you're salting your foods when you're meal prepping. And so if you like Element, that's great. If you like the taste of it, great, continue to buy it. Just know that you're buying overpriced table salt, okay? Additionally, the majority of what Element has in terms of the electrolytes are sodium. It's the number one electrolyte inside of Element. However, for athletes, those training three, four, five times per day, they're losing salt in their sweat and they need to rehydrate, which is the balance between water as well as the electrolytes in your body, don't need more sodium. They need more potassium. Now, what is the ratio between potassium and sodium that athletes need? It's been shown and in several studies based off the sodium ion channel and the potassium ion channel in the body that we need a three to one ratio of potassium to sodium. So you tell me why the ratio of sodium to potassium is ridiculously high in element when we actually need more potassium
potassium than sodium as athletes. So not only is this product not good for the recreational athlete because it has way too much salt, but it also doesn't have the right potassium to sodium ratio that athletes need. And so overpriced table salt, avoid it. It's really not gonna help you feel more hydrated. Higher sources of potassium, consider dates, and also consider buying new salt. N-U-Salt, you can get it on Amazon. It's five bucks, maybe less. So that's myth number four. And aside from the people promoting this, Dr. Huberman and some of the other famous podcasters, think about what it actually provides in terms of the benefit, not just who's promoting it. It's just expensive flavor water. Now, number five, ice baths. You guys know I hate ice baths. I'm never gonna do one because I don't see the benefits. Is it the big myth that I see around there is that cold water therapy can help us lose body fat. This is the theory. And this, some of this is actually true, but in terms of how much it actually helps, it, the science just doesn't support it. So if we're doing four to five watts per week, we may say, hey, we want to recover with an ice bath, right? The first thing I would caution anyone to do, regardless of how many calories it helps you burn or whatever recovery principles or your beliefs, do not do an ice bath right after you do a workout. It's only gonna stunt muscle growth and a variety of other things when we're trying to recover properly. Do an ice bath in the morning or do it late in the afternoon, not around your actual workout time. That's number one. Aside from that, we as mammals, any mammal out there likes to stay consistent in terms of its overall internal body temperature. Now, to keep our internal body temperature the same, the body has to do some work whenever we get into an ice bath. So we get into an ice bath, we do cold water immersion. Our body has to continue to fight to keep our body temperature the same and keep our internal body temperature warm. This is for any mammal. Now, our body does burn calories doing this. It also burns calories when we drink cold water and when we eat cold food because it has to raise the temperature of the food or the water up to keep our core body temperature stable. The amount of calories this allows us to burn or that we do burn during this process in a 10 minute, eight minute, six minute, 15 minute ice bath or cold water immersion is so small, insignificant. It does not make a difference in terms of the total calories burned throughout a day for you. Now, if you like to do cold water therapy or immersion or ice baths for therapeutic benefit, for a good mental challenge, or maybe it's a great way to help you recover from sore muscles and things like that on your off day, I say go for it. But you're not gonna get shredded doing an ice bucket challenge. Just not gonna happen. So that is the fifth myth that I see CrossFitters doing all over the world that's really not providing the benefit that they need. They can spend their time elsewhere. Guys, remember, the reason we appreciate bodies like Danielle Brandon and Chandler Smith and what they can do and how strong they are is because it cannot be cheated. There is no way to reach the goals that you want without hard work. Believe in yourself. Do what you know is right. These myths here that I'm bringing forth to you today can be avoided and you can focus on the things that really matter. Working hard in your workouts and fueling your body properly enough to do so. Putting more weight on the bar and not being afraid to strength train. Not being afraid of creatine. Not being afraid to hit your protein goal and do it consistently. And most of all, find a way to reach your goals and hit the nutritional based protocols and dietary interventions you have set for your goals without tracking macros. Hope this video was helpful. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button if you want to learn more from me, my team, so you can lose body fat, build muscle, and crush your wads without tracking macros.